Hey guys, I'm going to do a video just going through page two and three of the honors review packet. So this is the honors review packet um, and go ahead and follow along. So I'm going to skip this because it's a lot of um, just more introductory material we'll go over in class. Let's go through pages two and three. So I'm going to skip 14 as well. I'll start right at number 15. We want to figure out if the triangle pairs are congruent. If so, give a reason. For example, SSS, those are our congruency postulates and theorems, and write a triangle congruency statement. Remember, order matters for our statement. If you can't prove congruent state, why not? So let's look at number 15. Well, number 15, let's start by adding our vertical angles, because we know vertical angles are always congruent. And we need two pairs of sides that are congruent between the two triangles. So for instance, this would need to match up with one over here. But you'll notice there's no one tick mark in this triangle. All we know is that this thing here is an isosceles triangle. And that this thing here is an isosceles triangle. But these two triangles don't have enough information to be proved as congruent because we need like a one tick here, a one tick here, a two tick here, a two tick here, which we don't have. This is actually going to be, um, this is going to prove similarity with SAS similarity. But this is not congruent. We really have um, two similar isosceles triangles by SAS similarity. So they're, they're similar, but they're not congruent. OK. Um, and the other way we know that two is they're going to be proportional. So no matter what this is, like let's say this is three, this will be three. If this is five, I'm just making up a number, this will be five. But we'll have that common ratio of three to five, three to five. It'd have a common scale factor with that vertical angle. Okay, number 16, let's mark our um, shared side. Are these going to be congruent? Yes, because I have S, 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 um, S, S, S. It's, they're congruent. Okay, number 17, let's add our shared side. So now I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So are they congruent? Yes, because of angle, side, angle. And again, these are congruency postulates or theorems. We don't have to put the congruent sign because without that squiggle, we're assuming it's not similar. They're congruent. Okay, number 18, segment IH, here's IH, or HI is congruent to segment JG, that's this down here. We already have these right angles marked in, and we have a shared side. Now, it would be smart for you to still draw these two things separately. So, for instance, here's triangle HIJ. I should draw this here. Okay. We know that this is a 90 degree angle. There's that. Here's the shared side. Similarly, here's HGJ. So HGJ. Um, we have this, we have this, and we have this. Now it's a lot easier to see. So you notice I have ASS, ASS. Oops, that's no good, but because it's a right triangle, we have the special case HL. So are they congruent? Yes. My reason is HL, but now I have to write a congruency statement. Um, so why don't I start over here? I'll do an I to H to J, so I go from the right angle across one, across two. So what's that going to be congruent to? Well, I, the right angle, is going to match up with G. I went across the 1, then across the 2, so I'm going to go across the 1 to J, across the 2 to H. Okay, number 19. This is segment AB is perpendicular to segment CD. That means that's going to be a right angle. Segment EC is perpendicular to segment CD. That means that's going to be a right angle. Segment AB is congruent to segment CD. This whole thing here, it's kind of hard to mark because there's two pieces, but I'm just going to put it as close to the middle as I can. And angle A is congruent to angle D. Pictures, I've got angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. Now let's write our congruency statement. Remember, order matters. Um, I'm going to do A, B, C. So I went from one arc to right angle to nothing. So I'm going to go from one arc to right angle to nothing. Marked, that is. Okay, number 20 says segment CD, this segment here, bisects angle C. That means it's being cut exactly in half or into two congruent pieces. Segment AC is congruent to segment um, BC. And we have a shared side. So these are going to be congruent by side, angle, side. I'm going to do ACD, ACD, and then BCD. Okay, number 21, so segment AC, so this long thing here is congruent to segment BD, this long thing here. 
segment AD is congruent to segment BC, and then I'm going to have a shared side down here. So if we look at our two triangles, I'm not going to separate them out, but I am going to highlight them. This side, this side, and then we'll call it the two tick mark side. Then I had this side, this side, that will also be our two tick mark side. That's going to be SSS. I didn't mark these just because they, it's hard to figure out where to mark because they have multiple pieces, but they're going to be congruent by SSS. So let's do A to D to B. So A is going to match up with B. Um, A to D, so we would go to B to C to A. Okay, number 22, we have segment AD is parallel to segment BC. Segment AB is congruent to segment DC. I'm going to have a pair of shared sides, so I can use the reflexive property if I were doing a proof. And then if I can make that Z with my parallel lines, so here's my parallel lines, there's my Z, alternate interior angles. So let me mark those. That's the angle connected between those two highlighted, the angle between the two highlighted. Can't be this angle here because that's between a highlighted side and a non-highlighted side. So there's my alternate interior angles. So when I look at this, I have ASS. ASS, that's not an included angle. ASS is not one of our congruency postulates, so my reason is ASS and they're not going to be congruent, so we can leave it like that. So if you can't prove congruence to a state, why not? That's my reason why not. ASS is not a congruence postulate. I can even add that. Not a congruence postulate or theorem. Okay, last one. Since D is the midpoint of segment BC, that means this will be the same as this. These will be congruent by HL. It's ASS, but it's a right angle. So triangle A, B, D. So A at the top is going to go with E at the top. B right angle with C right angle. D with D. These are not vertical angles because these, like this line and this line don't go straight. Um, but it will turn out that they are congruent using CPCTC. So let's go to the next page. Here's page number three. This isn't something we spent a lot of time in class on, but it's something that you should be able to do pretty easily. So, um, um, number 24 says solve for X given that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FGH. Well, let's take a look. Segment AB is going to line up with segment FG. Segment BC oopsies, is going to line up with segment GH. I'll get one more color. Segment uh, AC will go with FH. So now that I have my size lined up, the problem is pretty easy. So X, which is blue, goes with 10, which is blue. These are congruent triangles, so these parts are also going to be congruent. So X equals 10. Time for Y. Well, Y is pink. 17 is pink, so Y equals 17. Now, I know this isn't drawn to scale. The purpose of this problem is, is to force you to look at this to match up the parts that go together. But typically, we will draw things more to scale, like in number 25. So here, X, Y goes with FE, YZ goes with ED, and then XZ is going to go with FD. So let's take a look. Pink goes with pink. These are congruent triangles. We have the congruency statement, so 9 equals 3X. That means X is going to have to equal 3. Similarly, the angle between the yellow and the blue will be the same as the angle between the yellow and the blue. So 30 equals 2y, so y equals 15. Okay, 26 is going to get a little trickier. We know that AB goes with CD. We know that BD goes with DB. And we know that AD the first and the last goes with CB, the first and the last. Okay, well, take a look at this triangle. What do you notice about what type of triangle it is? Well, I hope you noticed that it is an isosceles triangle. So if this is 10, this is also going to have to be 10 inches. Okay. Well, because the sides line up, this 10 inches, the blue is going to match up with this blue. So 10 equals 3a minus 14. I'm going to add 14 to both sides. I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides, and I get A equals 8. Now let's do the yellow. Yellow goes with yellow, so 10 equals 2B plus 2. I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides, and I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. Okay, okay time for the angles. 
Let's look at the x first. So 5x is in between yellow and pink. 75 is between yellow and pink. So 5x equals 75. I divide both sides by 5, and I get x equals 15. Let's do y. y is between blue and pink. Uh-oh, there's nothing between blue and pink. So let's see if we can think of another way to solve this problem. Well, wait a minute. This is an isosceles triangle. If these are congruent, that means this is an isosceles triangle too. If I have an isosceles triangle, the angles opposite the congruent sides are also going to be congruent. So this is also going to be 75 degrees right here. That's like part one of the rules we learned about isosceles triangles in unit 4. If two sides are the same, the angles opposite those sides will be the same. So now I can say that y equals 75. And now we need to do z. Well, wait a minute. These three angles inside a triangle have to add up to 180. So I can do um, 180 minus 75 minus 75 equals z. Um, and that's going to give me a grand total, I believe, of 30 degrees. Okay, number 27. Segment CB goes with DF. Segment BA goes with segment FE. And segment CA goes with segment DE. Okay, we need to solve for x. Oh, also guys, I'm sorry, this is kind of late, but for number 24, I know it says solve for x, it should say solve for x and y, and I know we already did that, but just for those of you who um, care about the directions. Okay, number 27. We need to figure out what goes with um, 9x. Well, 9x is angle D, D is gonna line up with angle C, so I want this one here, this one here. So now I can just say that 9x equals 27 degrees, so x is going to equal 3. Okay, we're getting close. Let's look at number 28. For 28, angle P and angle X correspond. So here's P, here's X. Q and Y correspond. R and Z correspond. That means that 75 and 15x are equal. Those corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So I can do 15x equals 75 and x equals 5. Okay, I can do yellow. The yellows will match up. So 5y equals 85. If I divide both sides by 5, I'll get y equals 17. And then blues, I'll get um, x, z equals 20. Now, remember, you're not going to get a calculator on this test, so you need to be able to do this division either on um, like in your head or on paper. So just as a heads up. Okay, last one for this page. Solve for x, y, and z given that AB, segment AB goes to segment FD, segment BC goes with segment DE, and segment AC, the first and the last letter, goes with FE, the first and the last letter. So let's set some things congruent. Let's do x first, so the blues. So 3x minus 2 equals 13. I'm going to add 2 to both sides and divide by 3. I get x equals 5. So that is a nasty looking 5. Okay, let's solve y. That's my yellow. So 9y minus 5 equals 22. I'm going to add 5 to both sides and divide by 9. And I get y equals 3. And then I'm going to solve for z. z is in pink. So 10z equals 25. I divide both sides by 10. Whenever I divide by 10, it's the same as moving my decimal place over 1, so that's going to be 2.5. So that's pages 2 and 3. I know that was kind of quick, but hopefully that's helping any of you who are stumped. And um, we'll see you in class soon.